I'm in the exhibit hall, and there are two uh, really interesting exhibits to look at. So uh, first of all, check out 3D Doodler at 3ddoodler.com. And you can see some of the things that are made with this 3D doodling pen. Let's go around here. It's, it's a busy booth because it's a really neat thing. <laughs> so these are printed with this pen that whatever junk is in there, <laughs> like, hardens really fast so you can doodle with it. Let's Hello. <laughs> Do you mind being recorded? <laughs> can can you um, tell me about this? So this is the three doodler, the world's first three D drawing pen. Uh, this is our second generation pen that we just introduced at the beginning of this year. Um, it's seventy five percent smaller. It's easier to use. Uh, it uses less power, so we now have accessories like our jetpack, which allows you to do two to three hours of the pen anywhere. So what we we're actually here at ISTE doing is introducing our EDU bundle, which is 12 pens, five nozzle sets, because you can actually change the nozzle on the pen and swap it to a thinner, thicker nozzle. Uh, we also have 12 stands that hold the pen, the 12 power packs, two jet packs, 1,200 strands of plastic, and all for $1,000. So, and you get everything. We also have a whole bunch of STEM curricular material that's available on our website for free. Uh, it will always be free. As the CEO of Wobbleworks, I guarantee that we will never charge for this. We do pay teachers to write this material, so it is good material. And we welcome other teachers to submit material. And we will share that material also for free. Because we're all about growing this community. So, yeah. It's grant writing time. And we're hoping to actually get some stuff up on our page to help write grants. Because it's a new medium. It's a new thing. We know, like, how the heck do you describe it? So I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks we'll have some uh, some grant material up there. It's like suggested grants and example grants. So, so what happens in the hands of kids when they have the, the pen? <laughs> a lot of things happen in the hands of kids. I mean, not only can you like bling out your old school calculator and make it cooler, but you know you can make like anatomy. Um, you can make a cool bus. My personal favorite. This is an ATA. We got we got a little. And, like, you know, it moves. So you have the head moving and the legs. How long does it take to make something like that? This took about two hours. And this was done freehand. We have stencils, though. Over 200 stencils online. They're just um, PDF files. You print them out. So, for example, like the bus. This is all done on flat pieces of paper. It's then peeled off of the paper. And then you use the 3 doodler to join all the pieces together. So like something like this is about 15 to 20 strands of plastic. It'll take you two to three hours to really get it together. Um, yeah, but something smaller. So for example, this is my wallet. Uh, of course it's uh, <laughs> you printed it. I three doodled this. This was a 30. That, that's the verb, three doodle. Yeah, I three doodled it. <laughs> and it took me about 30 minutes to three doodle that. And then let me find my iPhone case. This iPhone case was done in about 45 minutes. This is six months old. 
This is eight months old, and these live inside my pocket on a daily basis. So you can make really durable materials out of this. And we have ABS, PLA, and Flexi, and each of these materials has different properties. The PLA gives you a ni nice, wet, glossy look, so you can kind of see like the head of this dragon boat. It's like very wet and glossy. The ABS gives you a more dull look, but it's a little bit stronger material-wise. It's not as brittle. And then the Flexi, as its name would suggest, is a flexible material. So which is what the wallet is made out of. There's not a conference code, but there's a teacher's code. So if, if you contact us and demonstrate you have like an EDU email address or you're a library or something like that, we'll give you a 15% off code. So you can buy anything in our retail store for 15% off, plastics, pen, uh, tubes of plastic, whatever you want. Uh, the EDU bundle is already discounted. So there's no discount code applied to that. But it's $1,000 and it's everything you need for an entire like classroom, uh, 12 pens and all the plastic and stuff like that. And it's less than the cost of a 3D printer. Do you use a different nozzle for each uh, material type? You do not. You do have a, a setting on the side of the pen. So we have like a high low setting. And then the colors that it has indicates the color. So PLA and wood filament have a green. If I turn it up to high, give it a moment and it'll go blue and that means it's a high temp plastic so ABS and flexi and then we have more filaments coming out throughout the year so like I mentioned wood which is a 20% fill of pine with a PLA substrate so you can sand it you can stain it you can just use it for like amazing things anything you use wood for so I mean I guess you can you can go and you can just print something but um, are the best ones you have you said you had some plans or, or stencils or stencils, that, yeah. that you can do. Or um, is there, how do people, like when you're doing a tower like that, it's a stencil? So this is a stencil. So each of the layers was done independently on a flat piece of paper and then joined together. Yeah. So this is done freehand. This is done stencil. So it's just all done on a flat piece of paper. Peel the pieces off, join them together. So yeah. Anything else you want teachers to know about this? Ooh. We have our curriculum material I mentioned, yes. We have STEM curriculum material. You get to do the same uh, talk a lot of times, don't you? Getting in a loop, I know. Um, other than that, I mean, we've done a bunch of case studies, and I encourage teachers to read the case studies that are freely available on our website as well. And those case studies are demonstrating things that we weren't expecting. The, a lot of teachers that have used it have suggested that it helps to eliminate the gender gap in STEM education because of the visual learners and the non-visual learners and it actually internalizes what you're learning. So we're very excited about that possibility and we want it to really hopefully do that so that we can like see like we can change the whole way education happens. Like if awesome. Somebody had a question, how long did the tower take? Ooh, uh, I don't know. I know I can give you these. The wallet took me 30 minutes. The iPhone case took me 45 minutes. The heart took around 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, and uh, so the big question is, do you have a Liberty Bell? We do not have a Liberty Bell. I know. There's a request then, make a Liberty Bell. It was a request. We, we've been, we've been, where's my Liberty Bell? <laughs> Lewis, where's my Liberty Bell? Yes. Yeah, still, still making it. This is a great demo of articulated stuff that you can do. So like that's a fully, and it, you can imagine like you can add string to this, and you know make an actual like robotic hand or something. You could make potentially prosthetic um, at fractions of the cost of even what it costs to three D print it. So what, what age of students is this great for? So we really recommend it for uh, high school at this point. Um, we have other versions coming out later on that are for younger ages. Uh, the real concern is this is a very hot metal tip. So it's the same rules as a hot glue gun or a soldering iron. So, you know, it's your 14 plus on those things. Yeah. I know, I want to use it with my two and a half year olds, but I guess I'll have to wait. <laughs> yes, you'll have to wait about a year. <laughs> so. Thanks for sharing. This is, this is really exciting. And it's at 3ddoodler.com, or do, three, three doodler, three doodler, no two Ds, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> So that's the, the, the three doodler. Oh, he's wearing some glasses made. That too. Real, really neat. Look them up online. I bet they have videos and stuff. Um, I don't know about the internet going out at ISTE. It's been really bad here. So I'm using my Verizon connection because I just can't uh, depend on that. But let's uh, go over here and look at Little Bits Electronics.
Hello, do you mind being recorded? All right, you're live on the internet, so people might ask you questions, and uh, they would like to know about Little Bits. And would you like mind holding the microphone? Sure thing. Hello, internet world. Um, we're at ISTE. This is the Little Bits booth. We are a company that creates electronic building blocks that lower the barrier of entry for STEM and STEAM. Um, and it's really a tool that can be used K through university. Um, we have kids as young as kindergartner using them to understand grammar, um, to work on their fine motor skills. We have people in elementary school who are using them to do simple projects like understanding bioluminescence. Um, they can create projects that they hack their house and add lights and sensors and, and motors into their high-tech 21st century home. All the way through middle school, you can do programming um, and coding with your Arduino module. And the benefit is that you don't have to solder or wire any of the components unless you want to. Um, so it's really just a language of technology that kids can use for whatever it is that they're making or learning. So what's... Um so, so how, can you, how, how can it help uh, kindergartners learn grammar? So we've seen people use little bits to mimic parts of a sentence. So they'll use the blue power bit as an adjective and a green bit as an adverb. And in order to snap them the right way, they have to get the sentence right. And then the circuit turns on. So you it's can a little. <laughs> yeah. Let me. I'll give you a simple demo, and then it'll okay. make sense. So blue is power, green are output. Want me to hold the microphone for you. Yeah. <laughs> you want to show people. Blue is power, green is output. So just like that, you can have a light or a motor, or you can start using the number bit to data use data collection, or you can switch it to volts and actually see how the electricity is running through your circuit. And if you wanted to add a control, such as a pressure sensor. Now, just with the touch of your finger, you can change the amount of electricity that's flowing through your circuit. <laughs> so you can imagine how you could use this, um, both inputs such as sensors or switches, simple on and off switch, like that. Or you could use a dimmer. And then orange are wires, so if you do start building projects, um, these are great for project-based learning. Say you wanted to create a flashlight, so you could turn it on here, and your light could be on the front of the the product here. All right. So people want to, want to know about the cost and if there's a starter kit and all that. Do you want to show them this? So we offer a 15% discount for educators. Our three main collections are catered for educators, depending on how many students you're working with and what you want to do. If you just want to dip in and do a, a choice time activity, the student set's great for four to eight students. The workshop set is great, um, especially if you're starting in third or fifth grade. It's five, uh, excuse me, ten sets of ten modules. So you could do a structured activity or lesson with all of your students. Um, and these are things like button switches, things that you know are foundational in the system and you know aren't going to be too delicate with you know, a lot of hands using them. The Pro Library is our biggest collection. It comes with this wall-mounted unit and three tackle box. Yes, and we're giving away the Pro Library today. So if anyone's at ISTE, stop by and get your badge skin. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, come on down. No. Um, but everything is available on our website. Um, we, do, we have about 400 universities who are using it, over 2,000 schools, everything from formal to informal learning. So it's uh, totally adaptable, and kids have a blast. So you showed us, I guess, something relatively simple down here. What's one of the most complex things you've seen with Little Bits? The complexity definitely happens when you start adding the, the programming um, into, your, into your circuit. So we've seen it in some amazing Arduino projects. Um, we also have this cloud module that connects to the internet. So you can start making IoT devices. So I've seen... Um, one of the best projects I've seen was a mother and, and son in Tokyo who made a, a home alarm device. And they added um, music and there was a buzzer when the kid, there was a pressure sensor, when the kid opened the door it would sound in the house. And they made a video for us and at the end it said, you can save your family. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Um, but a lot of what we do, especially on the e-commerce side is, we, we don't want people to just buy products for one you know, sole purpose, when you can create your own and really cater solutions to meet your own life. I mean, it's like 
they, they go together similar to like Legos, right? And But they can do so much more and they have functionality. Yeah, and, and the system set up, so except once you have that foundational knowledge, you can build upon it. it. We're really lowering the barrier of entry to all these different subjects. So music, we have a, a synth kit. We have a guitar over there where you can create your own instruments. We have a collaboration we did with NASA to lower the barrier of entry into science and Earth and space science. Um, and, you know, of course, this is perfect for anything that involves design or art or things where you really want to incorporate electronics in a, a new way. And, and um, so anybody else have questions? There's like 29 people watching. Hi, everyone. What you like there? Give her, give her some hearts, some little bits hearts. They're always, they're always like a few seconds behind. There, oh, there they are. Guys. Yeah. There'll be more. There they go. <laughs> Thanks for joining us virtually. <laughs> yeah, this, this is really neat to see. Projects and lessons online, too, if you want to see what the community is making. We also have a global chapters program. So if you have a workshop or an event space and you just want people to understand electronics and make and build with them, you know, it doesn't have to be scary. It's a, it's a blast. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for stopping by. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay. That, yeah. <laughs> when I go to some of these vendors, they, they say, oh, get your name tag scanned. They don't understand if uh, you're, you're not there. So littlebits.com is the, the place. I think that's their website. At uh, littlebits is their, their Twitter, Twitter handle. And th they, they go together. And I, I'm really excited. So I don't know. Maybe I can get my two and a half year olds doing some little bits somehow. <laughs> um, question. What is my YouTube channel? Um, I think I'm... Tony Vincent one two three or three two one on YouTube. <laughs> I should know this better, shouldn't I? Um, go to learninginhand.com and click uh, live broadcasts from ISTE and scroll to the bottom and there's my YouTube videos there. So then you can find the username. There, there are six videos currently there from uh, yesterday, some archived periscopes. And um, as long as when I stop broadcasting here in a moment, it saves my camera roll, I'll put this one up onto YouTube. Uh, also, but otherwise you can rewatch for 24 hours before it expires from Periscope. So, oh, thanks. Tony Vincent one, two, three is my YouTube channel. Very, really creative name. I know <laughs> you, you are uh, very much welcome. I'm glad that I can make you a part of ISTE. So uh, we'll see you later.